Coming up on this edition of Out of the Blue, MTSU opens two new parking garages in time for the fall 2013 semester. Student Government Association President James Lee becomes the first to take advantage of the easy swipe system with his student ID. Incoming freshmen and their families are inspired by an author who spent nine years in prison, but now urges aspiring young scholars to dream dreams that make a difference in their lives and others. In this month's cover story, travel to Scandinavia with some MTSU art education students who help young artists overcome obstacles, all while teaching them about the beauty of book art. Plus, Tennessee's Best provides the workforce and the world of scholarship with 870 new graduates officially declared as earners of an MTSU degree during summer commencement. Hello and welcome to another edition of Out of the Blue. I'm Mike Browning. We're coming to you this month from just outside one of MTSU's new parking garages that opened in August. MTSU students can now simply swipe their student ID to access the parking convenience they have longed for and paid for with their vote in support of student fees. The new garages, adding nearly a thousand additional parking spaces, officially opened with a special ceremony last month. One question that always seems to come up was when on earth will MTSU build a parking garage on this campus? Well, uh, after many years and the last 10 years of research, surveys, preparation, and lots of hard work by a lot of very dedicated people, I'm pleased to say that today is that day. These are garages that were built by students for students. This grand opening of this wonderful addition to our landscape has been, as Ron mentioned, in the making for many years. It has been a long-standing issue, not only for a university like MTSU, but for institutions of higher learning across the country. And so we are very pleased to add to the landscape of this campus a facility that fits within the beautiful structure of our campus, one that will tie in as you look around to the other beautiful facility that is being completed, our one-stop uh, service, student services building that then connects to the beautiful new student union. It will be known as the MTSU Boulevard Garage and it will be a wonderful and well-welcomed addition to our campus. We have focused on both of these garages, I want you to know, on the safety and the security of our students. The stairwells are covered by heavy wire mesh material rather than solid walls. So these new garages, along with our new student union building, really reflects our continued focus on being a student-centered campus. On behalf of the Student Government Association, we are extremely excited to see the result of our campus coming together to better the university. <laughs> My fellow students and I now have the peace of mind not having to worry about parking before heading to class. I've been here through all the construction, and it's great to finally see a vision that was set in 2009 become a reality within a short period of time. But with the addition of a thousand new parking spaces, students now have the addition, additional viable parking options. We're proud of how much progress we have made, and I hope that we can continue to move forward as Tennessee's number one choice for students. At the beginning of every fall semester, incoming MTSU freshmen are inspired by a convocation speaker who has authored a book the students are encouraged to read. On August 24th, freshmen and their families were challenged by R. Dwayne Betts, 
author of the book, A Question of Freedom, a memoir of learning survival and coming of age in prison. Bet spent nine years in prison for carjacking and robbery. Needless to say, Betts has turned his life around and urged incoming MTSU students to dream dreams that change the world. And I told myself, Dwayne, you should be a writer. Now, this was absurd, really, because I didn't know that I would survive prison, one. I didn't know any writers, two. And I actually didn't know what it meant to be a writer. I knew that people wrote books, but I didn't really know what it meant to be a writer. So my dream was an absurd one, but it's the dream I held on to for the entire time I was in prison, and I worked tenaciously towards that dream. But the dream was totally self-centered. The dream was about how I could prove to the world that I was gifted, how I could write something that I imagined to be important. And I didn't get the opportunity to actually be a writer until I was under the most intense pressure of my life as a college student. I'm writing. MTSU has a new guide to help visitors and students alike enjoy what the campus has to offer, from theater performances to conferences. The free visitor's guide features detailed campus maps, general information about academic programs, and popular attractions, as well as contact information. Creators say it was designed as both a recruiting tool and a helpful resource. In addition to many campus locations, you can find the new visitor's guide at the Rutherford County Chamber of Commerce on Medical Center Parkway, hotels and motels, and other locations. MTSU's fundraising campaign for 2012-2013 has been recorded as the second largest in the university's history, second only to 2001-2002, the year a $10 million gift led to the creation of the Tennessee Miller Coliseum. The most recent effort totaled nearly $14 million in gifts from more than 9,000 donors. At more than $70 million, MTSU is now 85% toward its $80 million centennial campaign. The campaign was publicly launched in April 2012 at the end of the 100th anniversary of MTSU's founding. An MTSU professor will receive a $25,000 fellowship from the National Endowment for the Arts for the translation of Egyptian literature. Dr. Mohamed al Bakri, an associate professor of English and Applied Linguistics, is one of only 16 people in the country to obtain the coveted fellowship in fiscal 2014. The grant will be used to support the translation of Tahrir or Liberation Square plays and performance texts from the Egyptian Revolution. The works are an anthology of six contemporary Egyptian plays. The literature will be translated from Arabic to English. Well, the MTSU School of Music and Department of Speech and Theater will bring the award-winning Les Miserables to the stage of Tucker Theater later this month. Purchase your $10 tickets now to see a live production of one of the most beloved and well-known stories of all time. The three performances will hit Tucker Theater September 21st through September 22nd. Well, the author of the novel The Family Fang will be the keynote speaker at the Middle Tennessee Writers Conference September 28th. Kevin Wilson's The Family Fang was on the New York Times bestseller list and one of the top 10 books of 2011 by Time, People, and Esquire magazines, as well as Amazon and Barnes and Noble. The book has also been optioned for a movie starring Nicole Kidman. The Writers' Conference is sponsored by the Writers' Loft, the university's non-degree writing program. It is open to the public and includes workshops in fiction, nonfiction, poetry, and writing. To register for the Writers Conference, go to www.mtsu.edu, the law. If you've ever thought writing can be a transcendent experience, you now have a book to support your belief. Writing the Sacred Art Beyond the Page to Spiritual Practice is the work of Dr. Rami Shapiro, an ordained rabbi and former adjunct professor of religious studies, and his son, Aaron Shapiro, an MTSU English instructor. The practical book is a compilation of writing exercises that, among other things, tries to get writers to become aware of the self as a construct, says Dr. Shapiro. Writing the Sacred Art is available at the MTSU Bookstore. The Center for Popular Music at MTSU has expanded its internationally recognized collection with the works of songwriter, arranger, and band leader Joel S. Heron. Heron teamed up with Frank Sinatra to write the 1951 classic, I'm a Fool to Want You. The center's newest collection is a gift from Heron's youngest son, Rorick Heron. It includes business correspondence, scores, arrangements, contracts, photos, tapes, and other materials from Heron's professional life. For more information on the Center for Popular Music, visit popmusic.mtsu.edu. 
MTSU's new leaders in the College of Mass Communication received a warm welcome from Music Row during a reception at Broadcast Music International, better known as BMI. Here's a taste of some of the remarks highlighting that reception. And the other day I was talking to them and, and uh, a group of recording industry students and I asked if how many had recently graduated from high school and about 99% of the room did and I said, did you have a commencement speaker? And I said, yes. And I said, did they tell you you were special? And they all said, yes, they, they told us we were special. Uh, I said, did they tell you you were going to change the world? And yes, as a matter of fact, they told us we were going to change the world. And I said, you know, that really wasn't necessary because you have already changed the world. You changed the world when you decided to stop paying for music. Nothing is more important than student success. That was the key message President McPhee delivered to MTSU faculty and staff in the State of the University Address. Our efforts, ladies and gentlemen, collectively must be focused on doing our part, not somebody else's part, our part to help students succeed. And our colleges and schools and academic departments must take the lead and we will hold ourselves accountable in taking the lead in helping these students be successful. MTSU's military sciences program prepares ROTC cadets to become second lieutenants in the U.S. Army. At the beginning of every fall semester, new cadets are sworn in outside Forest Hall by taking an oath to the Army and the Constitution. Contractees, raise your right hands and repeat after me. I, state your name. I, Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the of the United States. Against, all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic. That, I will bear true faith, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and, allegiance to the same. and that, I will obey that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me According to, regulations, according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. MTSU's military science program has roughly 50 contracted cadets and more than 100 students enrolled in the program. We'll be right back. To see us would tell us that all the kids did was talk about us when, when they went home at the end of the day, so that made us feel really good. I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I am a valuable contributor to its progress and success. I am engaged in the life of this community. I am a recipient and a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I am committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner. Now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. True Blue. Being True Blue is working to enhance our community. My name's Kobe Sherlock, and I am True Blue. At Middle Tennessee State University, we are devoted to student success. We offer the advantages of a major comprehensive university with the care and attention found at a small college. We are a community that believes in learning, growth, and service. We hold these values dear, and there's a simple phrase that conveys them. I am true blue. I am true blue. I am true blue. Being true blue is embracing unique perspectives. My name is Iris Montes, and I am true blue. MTSU is quickly becoming known as a center for research. We are building the future through innovative programs and forging partnerships with vital industries in Middle Tennessee. With Tennessee's only master's degrees in professional science, recording arts and technologies, and aviation, our mission is to pursue creation, innovation, and discovery at the College of Graduate Studies at MTSU.
A group of MTSU art education seniors returned to campus this fall after spending part of their summer studying abroad. They worked with children in Denmark and Norway on book art that ultimately became a featured exhibit in the Todd Art Gallery on the MTSU campus. East of the Sun and West of the Moon inspired students from both sides of the Atlantic to ponder Scandinavian folklore and overcoming obstacles. Pictures to me capture the authenticity of our program and really what we did. You see us, you know, working with the principal here in her garden with her granddaughters and her brother. And you, you see a different aspect of like, wow, these are real people. We wanted to go to Scandinavia because it's an area that a lot of us um, don't really know a lot about and we wanted to go over there to teach the children their book art. And with the accordion folds that we have when the students made their individual books, we could literally just fold them down, press them, and then put all of the books, the little accordion books, inside of this one big altered book. And we thought it would be a very enriching experience because not only are we teaching them about book arts, but we're learning from a group of people that none of us thought we would ever get to be around. First we went to Norway and then Denmark and we taught book arts lessons to um, local elementary school students. We met some pretty amazing people and we saw some pretty amazing sights. You work with kids for a week and you see these happy middle school girls thumbs up saying, yeah, we like what we're doing. We teach the kids to make books out of, you know, just flat paper. So we primarily um, use accordion books because it's a more simple technique. They were so enthusiastic and they were just very, very excited for us to be there. And a lot of the parents, when they would come to see us, would tell us that all the kids did was talk about us when, when they went home at the end of the day, so that made us feel really good. We uh, took them um, into small groups and so each of us would be working with one or two students at a time. Going into the schools we got to live with the families so when you live with the families you hear the language being spoken, you eat their foods, you learn their customs. When I do this I have two roles. One is to teach my students how to be great art teachers. I, I love children and so for me it's very important that we give children quality learning experiences. Our, our theme was resiliency and overcoming obstacles and here we're coming in as strangers and we have to ask children to tell us some of their pains and some of the hardships that they've had in life. The Scandinavian folktale that we studied is all about this little girl going through all these obstacles. They're so just surrounded by nature and animals or something that like us means a lot to them but almost on another level so there were a lot of stories about pets that had died so I thought it was really interesting to see how common stories associated with animals were. One thing I was really shocked by was how small the communities were. Really it was less of a town and more of a village of about 300 people. These kids grow up in an area where I mean, it's just gorgeous nature. I mean, unlike anything you see here, and they're used to being around that, but with art, we kind of ask them to look at their surroundings visually, and so they're looking at things in a whole new way. We were told to take pictures and record all of our memories and just get pictures that we would feel proud of, that we would want to put in a photo book. I took all of my, uh, my photographs with an iPhone 5. That is um, the fjord that is, runs up to Flom. It's the uh, most beautiful place I've ever seen. And then when we came back, we were all just so blown away with everything that we had. We thought, why not put these on the gallery wall? Because as much as we like them, we know everyone, would out, everyone else would love to see the um, photos that we've taken. And I took the camera and I turned it around so that you could see yourself in the screen. I wanted to take a picture that represented both um, sort of my own personal flair as well as to get some of um, my MTSU pride and also to show off just the beautiful place that I was in. So what I did was I wore my reflective glasses and again I turned the camera around so that it was um, pointing at me and I could see on my, myself on the screen and I arranged it so that you can see um, the Raider doll that we all took with us and um, as well as the beautiful mountains in the background and I snapped myself a nice self-portrait. They did a performance for their family and then after we all ate dinner 
and um, some old country farmhouses, and then we had an exhibit set up inside one of the farmhouses with all of the books they had made and everything they had worked on, and the parents were very proud of it. It was the day that the, the children had their um, art exhibit, and they were all very excited about it, and they were outside getting ready for the day, and it was just a very candid shot of all of them. That is my friend Katie Scoggins, otherwise known as Laura Scoggins. Katie is eating a slice of homemade cake with blueberries and raspberries and homemade whipped cream topping. We took a um, canal tour and it was absolutely beautiful. We got to see some very old houses, hundreds of years old. Uh, in fact, one of these houses along the strip uh, belonged to um, H. C. Anderson, a uh, famous folklorist. So we decided that we were just going to go explore Bergen, and so we walked around and there was this big castle fort on the sea, and so we just walked around and took pictures. My house mother that I lived with, she took me to Aarhus, um, which is a city on the sea, and we went to see some sculptures. They had a, an exhibit there that was apparently a once-in-a-lifetime exhibit with all these international artists that all did amazing sculptures, I mean just life-size huge sculptures, and they were all just dotted along the sea. And so I snapped that picture while we were there. The first group of kids we worked with were, were from a very small school in kind of a, a village that only had about a total population of 300 people, so very small town. The first one was called Flom, that was in Norway, and then the other one was Brindrup, which was in Denmark. I feel like our experience going over there was very enriching for them because not only were we doing the book arts with them, which was fairly new to them, they hadn't really heard about that or thought that that was something that they could do, we also brought in a Scandinavian folktale called East of the Sun, West of the Moon that some of them were familiar with, so it was kind of nice because they're learning a new technique, but they're working with a story that they're kind of familiar with, so it made them feel a little bit more at ease. And I love that picture of Kelsey because I think that really describes the closeness that the students and my student teachers feel together. I feel like I'm, I understand more that not everyone thinks or acts the same that I do, and knowing that, I think it makes me a stronger individual, and it definitely makes me feel like I'm a stronger educator. A new exhibit, Collaborative Spirit and Art Faculty Exhibit by MTSU's Art Faculty and Staff opened August 29th and will be on display in the Todd Art Gallery through September 19th. We'll be right back. I am really proud of you. Now here's your portion of the electric bill, water bill, phone bill, car insurance, health insurance, oh, and rent is due on the first of the month. We started in 1911 with a clear mission to train Tennessee's best teachers. For the last 100 years, Middle Tennessee State University has carried out that mission and so much more. Nationally recognized as an affordable quality university, the number one choice of undergraduates in Tennessee. As we celebrate our centennial, we look with pride at the past. We look forward to the future. Check out why we're Tennessee's best. Being True Blue is making the world a safer place. My name is Sam Willie, and I am True Blue. Nowhere else will you find one-on-one -on -one FaceTime with the faculty of award-winning industry professionals. Learn a foundation of skills to last an entire career along with hands-on experience with the latest technology in today's media industries. At the third largest mass communications college in the country, Middle Tennessee State University. Being True Blue is helping others to reach their potential. My name is Daryl Freeman and I am True Blue. Do what fits you and accelerate the path to your goals. MTSU is the best place to finish your degree and get ahead in your career. Create a course schedule around your life, not the other way around. Take classes online or in the classroom. 
and only take the classes you need by transferring credits you've already earned. Getting a degree that matters is just one step away at Middle Tennessee State University. Eight hundred and seventy more new graduates from Tennessee's best. The six hundred and sixty-five undergraduates and two hundred and five graduate degree recipients, including eleven PhDs, walked across the stage for a handshake and a hard-earned diploma. MTSU's music professor, Dr. Michael Arndt, told them the road won't be easy, but urged the graduates to make their own luck. Dr. Michael Arndt. As of today, you have accomplished the first of many of life's challenges, graduating from college. Later today, you may get your first indication of the next challenge. Your dad may come up to you once the festivities have wound up a bit and say something like, son or sweetheart, I am really proud of you. Now here's your portion of the electric bill, water bill, phone bill, car insurance, health insurance, oh, and rent is due on the first of the month. I would like to quote one of the wisest men of my generation, Ashton Kutcher. At the Teen Choice Awards just this past week, instead of making a couple of silly comments and going back to his life in Hollywood, he had this to say. Opportunity looks an awful lot like hard work. I never had a job in my life that I was better than. One job was always the stepping stone to another. So from where I stand, opportunities look a lot like hard work. We tassel from your right to the left side of your caps. Congratulations. And here's what a few of the summer graduates had to say about their hopes and aspirations for the future. This means the world to me. You know, I spent six years in college and I can't wait to see what the future holds. I'm hoping. And I hope that in the future I can use my degree to go into research um, and also go into non-GMOs to help um, low-income families. Uh, well, I have a degree in criminal justice, and right now I'm, uh, I've applied to Metro Nashville Police Department, and uh, hopefully I'll be getting started with them pretty soon. And what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to apply it to those who cannot speak for themselves, children, and those who are impaired and need help, and policies are not there to help them. That's it for this edition of Out of the Blue. For more information on MTSU News, be sure to go to mtsunews.com. Until next time, stay true blue.